violence of war shattered the peaceful celebration of the Lunar New Year through a simultaneous attack by the communists on many of the cities throughout South Vietnam. On the second day of Tet, the ancient capital of Hue was hit by a mass attack. Heavily populated areas at South Vietnamese army barracks were hit with heavy gun and rocket fire. By taking advantage of the Tet troops, the communists had infiltrated their forces into the old capital. They soon established themselves in the citadel and in strategic spots throughout the city. The 324th Division of the North Vietnamese Army had been given the task of taking Hue. Its 4th Regiment attacked from the northwest down the left bank of the Perfume River, while the 6th Regiment moved up the opposite side of the river, attacking from the southwest. The citadel itself was seized by a North Vietnamese battalion. Its headquarters was established at the Dong Ba Gate. These scenes were shot by Army photographer Vin Dan after his capture by the Viet Cong. He was rescued by South Vietnamese troops a short while later. Moving out of their stronghold in the citadel, the communists attempted to gather people at the Dong Ba Gate and on Phan Boi Chow Street. There they hoped to disseminate their propaganda. However, the people of Hue knew about previous communist lies and contradictory statements. Wherever the communists went, the people fled. All that greeted the advancing communist troops were block after block of empty houses. Many homes were entered and searched, only to find the inhabitants had fled through back doors moments before. The people of Hue scurried out of the city to South Vietnamese army positions for protection. The enemy battalion commander watched despondently as his hopes for popular support faded with each refugee who fled the old walled city. He ordered an entire block of homes burned in retaliation. However, his acts of retaliation were short-lived. South Vietnamese aircraft soon appeared on the horizon and began raining tons of bombs on enemy positions. At the same time, the Arvin 1st Infantry Division began its counterattack. Two battalions of the 3rd Regiment were sent to rescue Hue. Wherever the Arvin troops appeared, the refugees rallied to them for protection as communist guns opened fire. The Arvin troops quickly returned fire on the enemy. Jets appeared overhead and began providing fire support to cover the advance of the Marines and airborne troops. Fired at each target prior to the attack, allowing the populace a chance to escape. 
communist plans to use the people as shields during the fighting were spoiled. formulated for attacking the next objective. This was an enemy stronghold on the Citadel Wall. As government soldiers approached the communist positions, enemy gunfire raked their lines. The approach was difficult, for the enemy held the high ground. Braving the fire, Arvin soldiers advanced and soon overwhelmed the enemy. of enemy bodies were found still in their foxholes. Scattered around them were weapons and supplies of all kinds. Many boxes of ammunition had never been opened. Chinese and Russian-made anti-aircraft guns, machine guns, and rocket launchers were among the weapons captured by the victorious soldiers. The communists had reaped for themselves only a harvest of death and destruction. portion of the citadel secured, the South Vietnamese troops prepared to assault their next objective. The enemy, forced from their positions outside the city by elements of the 3rd Regiment, blew up a portion of the Paul Dumer Bridge to cut off logistical support for the advancing South Vietnamese army. Frightened refugees ran down Tron Hung Dao Street, carrying to safety what belongings they could. Behind them, buildings were ravaged by fires which the communists had set to delay the advancing troops. Only a few days before, Tron Hung Dao Street had been a thriving business center in the city. Now it lay in smoldering rubble. were the only gifts from the communists to the people of Hue on the day of the Tet Lunar New Year. The army worked to evacuate civilians from the battle area. A floating bridge was built to span the gap in the Paul de Mer Bridge. This enabled the refugees to reach temporary resettlement centers on the south bank of the Perfume River. Frightened and weeping, the aged and weak did their best to carry their heavy belongings in their flight from the city. of the communist attack had to be buried in hurriedly dug graves near the main emergency refugee center. The children, many of them orphans, wept in strange surroundings beside the fresh graves. With 
civilian evacuation completed, clearing operations began immediately. Artillery fire was brought on Trong Hung Dao Street to halt possible enemy infiltration there. Meanwhile, more Marines were sent to the rescue of friendly forces inside the citadel. Convoy of landing craft brought troops across the Perfume River. The convoy came under heavy enemy fire from both banks as it approached the landing zone. The soldiers bravely returned the fire. in with few casualties. Helicopters were ready at Baovin to rush the fresh troops to critical combat areas. Fifteen miles south of the city, some 16,000 refugees had fled to the Fubai district. There, many emergency refugee centers were established by the local authorities to provide aid for the stricken civilians. Tons of food, clothing, and medicine were brought to the camps and immediately distributed to the refugees. appreciated the assistance provided during their time of need. Many military medical teams were also sent to the refugee camp to care for the people. The city of Hui had been the scene of many conflicts during past centuries, but never before had it suffered such widespread destruction. The thousands of dead, the orphans, the homeless, and the terrible destruction in the city stand as mute evidence of the violence communist North Vietnam and the Viet Cong brought to the people of South Vietnam on their most sacred days.